Hello everyone! While leveling through the Shadowlands, exploring the different zones, meeting the different factions, we uncovered that Sire Denethrius is actually in league with the Jailer. He sent down a whole bunch of anima into the Maw, aiding the imprisoned Eternal One with its release. Long ago, we stood as one to imprison that monster. With the Primus gone and Denethrius a traitor, our pantheon has been broken, and doom comes for the Shadowlands. There is yet hope. This mortal saved me from the Maw, and revealed the Sire's treachery. They aided my forest as well. Their kind has shown great potential. If focused, it could turn the tide in our favor. Agreed. For the good of the Shadowlands, each mortal must choose a covenant. And when our realms have regained their strength, we will stand together against the darkness. It's decision-making time, and in this case, we're going to join the Venfir in Revendreth. You may question why we are willing to impart our power onto a mortal, though you are no ordinary mortal, are you? No. You can breach the boundaries of the Moor with ease. Something that even the oldest Venthyr are unable to do. That ability alone would make you perfect for my plan. But there is so much more to you, isn't there? It will never be enough to simply defeat Denathrius. We must also break his hold on Revendreth. His grasp on this realm comes from the medallions he created, each containing a fraction of his power, given to subordinates that would obey without question. We must secure these medallions, and with them usher in a new era that would see Revendreth return to its true purpose. I distinctly remember hearing of such a plan many years ago, Renathal. Before the Master's true intentions were known. With Castle Nafria and the threats of Revendreth being our first raid coming up, the Prince and the Venfair, they make ready to take on the Sire, and we're going to need his gifted medallions to do so. Pride, Desire, Avarice, Envy, Dread, Dominion, and Wrath to control, harvest, drain, and seize the burdens of the souls delivered to their domain. The Master has forced these medallions of the Harvesters. Let them be the conduits of his will, providing power and the machinations of death to those servants deemed most fitting. May they be instruments of his ever-vigilant force. May they be the fangs by which he feeds upon the sins of the dead. But to get to them and the Master, to have the Venfair return to the duty of helping souls atone for their sins, saving them from an eternity in the Maw, we'll have to empower ourselves, empower our followers, and empower our covenants. First, we pledge ourselves to the Court of Harvesters, regaining the covenant abilities that we used while questing through the zone. Please take your place when you are ready to begin. You stand before the Court of Harvesters, willing and able to accept our gift. Help us return Revendreth to its true purpose. Help us rid this realm of a tyrant whose actions threaten all of reality. This gift of power will be yours so long as you remain loyal to our cause. As we adventure through the Shadowlands, our connection to the Covenants, it grows ever stronger, and our renown will as well. A higher renown, it means greater rewards, greater power. We gather it by completing chapters in our Covenant campaign, by returning anima to our storage, and by saving the souls from the Maw itself. But what's power if you don't show it off? If we are to aid the rest of the Shadowlands, we must begin here in our domain first, right here in Revendreth. Our first time completing Free World Quest in Revendreth, it rewards us with anima, safely stored in our Sanctum Reservoir. This power can be used for many things, but this Sanctum, it, it can't function on anima alone. It's going to require the combined effort of many souls working together to unlock its full potential. Wouldn't you know it? We know of a domain where plenty of souls would love to come with us and be put to work. Back to the mall we go, where our broker friend Venati helps us out. For a price, of course. With the souls collected, we can start on our first covenant upgrade. 
Maybe we'll decide to lay down a transport network for easier travel in the zone. An anima conductor, perhaps, to activate new challenges and adventures. A command table. Don't think I'll have to explain what a command table does. Or a unique upgrade that's different for every single covenant. In the case of the Venfir, this upgrade will give us access to the Ember Court. Allow us to throw some amazing parties and help rebuild Renafal's influence by rubbing shoulders with some very important people across all of the Shadowlands. Now, the power of the Harvesters, it flows through a mortal body, but it is given greater might to be found by binding our soul to another. The soul bind is not an irrevocable bond, however, it is not to be entered into lightly. We will experience one another's past, our hopes, fears, dreams, our very memories. If any of them still linger, we will become kindred spirits in the truest sense. Once complete, our connection will transcend physical space and make us stronger in more than mere brawn. In our case, our first soul bind is with Najia the Misblade. Every Naja, please come forward. You will be the first to receive this honor. May her blade serve you well, Maul Walker. Do not look so glum, Draven. You will get your turn soon enough. You are so refreshingly fresh. As our renown grows, so too will our bond over time. But there is the ability to accelerate the process with the use of some conduits. Just pick the different abilities that we want, the different paths our bond flows through. Great power, it awaits to be unlocked. It is done. May the power within your soul serve you well. That's the basic setup for the Covenant, onwards to the weekly campaign. For the Venfair, during our questing, we kinda helped Sai the Nefrius for a bit, not knowing what he was truly up to. We took down and imprisoned the accuser, while she warned us that the Nefrius was not to be trusted. He wanted her to defile the ancient rituals that define who they are, something that she could not do even for him. We kinda helped replacing her with Lord Chamberlain, and he has no problem doing whatever the sire requests of him. No problem giving up their sacred charge and just torment and squeeze every bit of anima out of the charges, as long as it pleases the master. The accuser shows us how it's supposed to be done. This plays a proper ritual of absolution. It's not a kind or easy ritual, but atoning for one's sins never is an easy process. After all rituals of absolution are complete, each soul must then face its final judgment with three potential verdicts. If proven unworthy, if they are unable to atone for their sins, then they are condemned to the maw for all eternity. But if fully absolved of its sins, it will either be elevated to a Venvir, or they can return to the Arbiter to be assigned a new destination within the Shadowlands. It is their most sacred ritual, and one of them is happening right now. While disguised, we witness how the judgment happens under Lord Chamberlain's command, and it's all perverted and wrong. The soul presented before them is one the accuser is intimately familiar with. She knows that it has spent millennia atoning for all of their sins, but the others, they condemn it to the maw anyways. A mockery of their sacred ritual. She can't just stand at the sides hidden, let them do whatever they want. She steps in to sire this soul herself binding hers to Cranoid Feligri and attest to their worthiness to be made of Enfer. Their fate and that of the accuser are now the same. Inquisitor Treyan can't undo this even if they want it. Feligri is granted the status of Enfer and with it comes their new eternal name, Grezit. But as for you, accuser, I will not forget your vow or the vulnerability it creates. She sacrificed a lot to save this single soul and would do so again because it is right. It is their sacred charge. Revendreth might be a realm of penance and torment, but it is done with a purpose beyond just feeding the Jailer and Desire. There is a chance at redemption for those willing to take it, and the Accuser remembers what they're here for. And she's not the only one either. Despite what we witnessed here, some steadfast Venfeer, they do still remain within these halls. Those who have not forsaken their vocation and carry on with their calling. Archivist Fane is one such as these. 
The archivist, they maintain strict records of every soul that passes through these halls. Or at least they're supposed to. The Sinstones of powerful Venfir, they tend to go missing, like the one of Inquisitor Trian. He might have stolen it, or someone could be hoarding it as blackmail. Either way, we need to gather some Sinstone records from the cryptophilers in the area. With it, he'll be able to complete his archives, and we'll get any Sinstone that we need. Then we just need someone to use the Sinstone, like we did when we fought against the accuser. Our old friend Tamil will be perfect for the job, and thankfully, Cryptkeeper Kassir, he holds no grudges about the time to be kicked the crap out of him. But he can't give us Temel though. The Lord Chamberlain deemed Temel a threat to his control. His thugs have bashed into bits and scattered to pieces amongst these crypts. Nothing a bit of anima can't fix though. So after gathering the Sinstone records and putting Temel back together, we're ready to confront Inquisitor Trayan, or as he was known in life, Palaval the Biased, who squandered his unparalleled intellectual gifts, who made judgment from his perspective alone, who was slow to admit error and quick to accuse it. We'll be able to obtain more Sinstones in the future, hunt down more of these corrupted Inquisitors for the achievement It's Always Sinny and Revendreth. For now though, a significant threat to the accuser has been taken care of, and good old Gresit joins us at Sinfall. Now, I'm not entirely sure if, story-wise, this quest is supposed to be available yet, but it is available in-game. Lord Chamberlain, he is the end boss for the Halls of Atonement Dungeon, and while the other Harvesters of Sin, they might be converted to our cause, his medallion must be taken by force. With allies at our side, we venture through the corrupted, twisted halls until the Lord Chamberlain falls, and the medallion of pride is taken back to our base at Sinfall. Pride. Of all the sins a soul can be burdened with, pride is the most delicious. It presents the greatest challenge when trying to exsanguinate this burden from the souls that are sent to us. It takes time, ceremony, dedication. To this end, may the medallion of pride be forever upon the neck of only our most skillful and patient Venfir. May it grant them authority over the ceremony wards, so that they can use its vast powers as an instrument to strip these souls of their burdens and fulfill our noble purpose. Yes, we still have our old reliables, our workhorses. Last time, we set up our base, and we dealt with our mistake of placing Lord Chamberlain in charge at the Halls of Atonement. We brought back his Medallion of Pride, but we're going to need all of the medallions granted by the Sire to stand a chance against him and the Jailer. We must convince the Court of Harvesters to convene, and convince them to forsake the greatest patron in all of their reality, throw their lot in with Prince Renafal, a failed rebellion with a quote-unquote new plan. A meeting that's gonna take place at the old fortress of Darkwall Tower. We revive Chelda the Blade Wall with a little bit of anima to help us clear out the place while also placing some banners. With the right words and incantations, they will turn this area in a temporary sanctuary to guard us from the power of the harvesters and the master himself. Then, it's just a simple matter of actually inviting them. The Stone Rite is our first guest to visit. She is ancient, powerful, and responsible for creating the Stone Legion. But never, ever confuse her sympathy for her creations as a weakness. She holds the Medallion of Raw for a reason, and is not someone that we want to be subtle with. Together with General Draven, we walk right through the front door. By crossing the bridge of defiance on foot, defeating any who would dare to stop us, we may have an audience with the mother of the stoneborn. This right here is an ancient rite. However, our safe return is not a guarantee. Beware. So, Draven, you continue to serve Prince Renethal despite his many failures. Mother of stone, I serve Revendreth. At this time, the Dark Prince is the only one who has a plan to best do that. With this Marwalker's help, we may undo the Master's blind devotion to the Jailer and the Maw. Very well. I shall see what Renethal has to say. If nothing else, perhaps I might end this pointless struggle that has my children fighting each other. The Countess, Harvester of Desire, does like the occasional intrigue and mystery. 
Her wits are sharper than most swords. And while she never seems to carry a weapon, you must assume that she is never unprotected. Her dominion was that of the castle ward, and it's her authority that keeps the nobles in line. It's cudgel face that hooks us up with a little disguise to make us look like one of the servants. As a dredger, we can just walk through the party, be ignored by the nobles chatting and drinking the night away, deliver our invitation to the countess. An invitation from Prince Renethal? How delicious. I simply cannot miss this. Finally, there's the Tithe Lord at Caretaker's Manor. Believed to be the 275th caretaker to lord over the village wards. He is as dangerously ambitious as every harvester of envy before him, and he will only help if he believes to gain more power. For that reason, it is too dangerous to just go up and walk to him. Instead, we we'll use Tamil, as the stone fiend is a common messenger of Revendreth, and a few, aside from a handful of observers, will bet an eye at his arrival. What is this? So, the Dark Prince is making his move to usurp the throne. I suppose someone of character should be there to stop him. Now, it's up to Prince Renafal to use his charms, sway the crowd and convince them to join his side. With the medallions combined, we can seize control of Revendreth. You mean you could seize control? These are merely the ravings of a selfish prince, desperate to reclaim his former glory. The bargain between Denathrius and the Jailer will leave us all to be consumed by the Maw. I want our ways to survive. If that makes me selfish, I would hope you were all selfish as well. None of your grand words matter. You cannot defeat both the Jailer and the Master. I will not subject my stoneborn children to further suffering. Ha! I've heard enough. This usurper demands our medallions, but offers nothing. Why, Renethor? If only you had shown such passion ages ago. I find it positively enthralling but i must agree with the others you lack leverage the other harvesters they're not convinced so we'll have to do this the hard way increase our renown show them that our side is the winning one or take out any that remain unconvinced now there is one that is fully on our side though Tiatar, the Mad Duke, has come to realize that we are meant to be the most kindred of spirits. Our enduring nature, it has enraptured him, and he's afraid that he cannot bear to imagine an afterlife without our beguiling presence. Let us bind our souls forevermore and carry each other in both heart and mind. My most gracious farewell to you. As you ah, the spring in my step is only matched by the lightness of my soul. What an occasion this will be! I warn you, I tolerate no bamboozlement, but I cannot partake in. Last week, we brought the core of harvesters together, but the prince, he has failed to convince them to join his side meaning they were gonna have to find a different way to get our hands on their medallions. The Medallion of Desire, it rests upon the neck of the Countess. It's a source of power for her, but not her only source. Claiming it by force, it would only bring a short victory. But Teotar might know a way to be more sneaky about it, steal it without making any new enemies. Before they cast him out into the light, he held a prominent position within the Countess's court. That position, amongst others, it granted him a mirror, direct access to her chambers, so she could meet with her paramour in private. That's our way in, but the estate and the mirror, they've been given to another upon his exile. Teotar, he can't exactly walk into his old estate. They would just earn him a one-way ticket back into the Ember Ward, so we meet up with his butler Bogdan for him. Get his old staff back in service, find the key to Fornhill Manor, and take care of Viscount Nicolet, the one that currently inhabits the manor. The Countess will avenge me! Why the lady chose such a lout as a new paramour will never know. 
It's going to take them weeks to rid the estate of his stench. We'll leave the staff to handle that disgusting job. Let us use the mirror and sneak into Redlaw Tower. I've been expecting you. Come, let us find a more comfortable place to chat. No need to be on edge. As you can see, my guards have been instructed to treat you as a guest. You will enjoy my hospitality, so long as you remain receptive to what I have to say. Please, take a seat. Perhaps you misunderstood. That was a command, not an offer. Now sit. You came here with the intent of stealing my medallion. No need to deny it. I am just stating the known facts. I am grateful we have this chance at civilized discourse, since stealing from an aristocrat could find you making atonement. Or worse. But please, eat. Let us not speak of such heinous crimes. Do you dare ignore my hospitality? You have no need to steal anything. In fact, I am prepared to give you my medallion. You see, the medallion is powerful, yes, but it is not my sole source of influence. The role I play in this society is a crucial one. All I ask is that you take the time to learn a bit about what I do, and the medallion will be yours. It really is quite that simple. I don't know about you, but the Countess is quickly rising as one of my favorite Venfir. She makes it her business to know what's going on within her district. Knowledge is power, beyond just that of a medallion. And to keep such a position of power amongst the snake pit of Venfir is no easy task, as we discover from a missive, not sent by stone fiends, but rather by Venfir. It mentions how they must rid themselves of the Countess. Her loyalties no longer lie with the Master. She accommodates mortals within their city as if they're equals. The party upon the terrace presents itself as the perfect place to strike. You must find a way to secure an invitation. United, our houses will be strong enough to usurp this sympathizer. The note is clearly written by Andre of House Iremore. The handwriting is obvious, but it gives no hint as to who their ally might be. It's no use trying to get Andre to tell us who he's working with. He is not going to talk, and we can't risk alerting his accomplice. My death will not delay our plans. At the same time, he is a threat that we cannot allow to stay alive. So we track him down for a nice little chat, and then burn down his manor to the ground to make it look like an accident. That still doesn't flush out his co-conspirator though, but the Countess has an idea. We're going to invite everybody over for a party. Give them that chance to strike that they were looking for. With a Duskmire elixir in our system, our voice, it will compel the guests to speak the truth. As we question them, ask them if they're enjoying themselves to figure out who has ill intent towards the Countess. To me, it clearly seemed like the House of Darkvane was the culprit. Sure enough, I can forgive Sir Geoffrey, who'd rather stay at home and be with her cats. But Duchess Leona, she is enjoying herself about as much as she enjoys a dagger to the eye. Soon, they won't have to endure these self-indulgent sorties. I'm sure that that is how you pronounce it. Soiree, a formal evening party. Well, Madam Lanuda finds this display of excess disgusting. Does the Countess really think she can control us with these parties? So when given the choice between House Briarbane, Primrose, Darkvane, Sourwine, Duskmire and Sinfang, I picked House Darkvane. Beware. Of course. House Darkvane. Chancellor Cardrin leads them. Find him and enact immediate justice. A Venthyr that consorts with mortals is not fit to lead. I will finish what Andre started. After checking out Wowhead though, it seems like there is no choice at all. All of them are ready to stab the Countess in the back, and all of them are a potential ally to Andre. All you need to do is pick a name. Any name, really. I guess that's how it goes in Revendreth. 
And now we see the importance of the role that the Countess plays. Her parties serve a much greater purpose, keeping the influential and elite entertains. It helps quell uprisings. If their minds are consumed by trivial things, they don't have time to plot or plan. Sometimes, battles are best fought before they begin, and giving us her medallion is an example of that. Until, Until we, we meet again, more Walker. Desire. Venfir are mostly loyal servants, but they function best when properly motivated. Why choose this eternity if it does not come with appropriate rewards? And so I name the Medallion of Desire to grant authority to a Venfir to manage my court and their needs, as well as collect a savory number of special souls that my most elite and trusted of children might enjoy. May this medallion allow this harvester to grow the castle wards and the aspirations of its Venfir even higher. Last week, we managed to obtain the Medallion of Desire. This time around, we're gonna go after the Medallion of Avarice. Avarice, it apparently means an excessive or insatiable desire for gain or wealth. It's the sin of greediness. While this medallion, it bestows the wielder authority over the catacombs wards. There, let those afflicted with this burden be sealed away until long after the time that they believed they would be remembered. Let them fade away to be forgotten. The memory of their great deeds be measured against the unending weight of eternity. The tool of the curator, one of the few remaining true Venfir, forged during the founding of Revendreth, like Prince Renifal and the Stone Wright, the curator was not turned Venfir from a mortal soul. Rather, she was willed into being by the sire. You might recall how we saved her from the Tower of Torghast, as that's where she was sent to after their failed rebellion. The time in the tower, it did her no favors, as her memory, it isn't quite what it used to be. This is worse than I assumed, Moor Walker. The Crypt Ward has plunged into chaos in my absence. There is much to do. I hid my medallion through this mirror before Denathrius cast me into the moor. To prevent him from reaching it, I cleaved the glass. I entrusted each of the halves to my subordinates. Oh, oh! It is imperative we reach them before Denathrius' forces do. Watcher Emil and Sin Keeper Matteo were trusted with safeguarding the mirror shards, and it's Emil that we tracked down first. The guard captain lost contact with them when the chaos erupted, and they've sent guardsman Doran ahead to search for him. He too has yet to return, and since we're gonna go deeper into the catacombs anyways, we might as well give them a hand. Their reinforcements never showed up, which left them unable to tend to the souls here. They've broken out of their cages before they were ready for the next step in the process. But the chains of regrets, they allow us to chain them back up and put them back into their cages. Then their guards, weakened by the lack of anima, they become overrun as the sin stones that this land is built upon rose up around them. Not to mention the manifestations of the souls who can no longer be tended to that are now running wild. We slay them, making the grounds a bit more defendable. But we sadly reach a guardsman door in far too late. Their journal describes the hunt for Emil. And when they saw the cloak scouts from Arkavam, they thought salvation had come. Instead, they drew their blades against them, their very own kind. Not all have remained loyal to the curator. Some have decided to side with the sire, as we discover while escorting a mill. None other than Sinkeeper Matteo wants to acquire that second meter shard for the sire. Foolishly, he let his guards do the dirty work, and they stand no chance against Emil and the Mallwalker, fighting them together. Emil, you are safe! Matteo has betrayed you. He returned to Arkavam. It seems he will stop at nothing to acquire your medallion for the sire. Then I fear we do not have much time. We must put a stop to this now. Reaching Matteo isn't gonna be easy, as he's hanging out in the curator's former manor. It's guarded by Norman the Dorman, an extremely loyal dredger that will only grant access to those that possess the right fangs. The fangs of the commanders of this operation, Examiner Dessinia, Boyan, and Lonada. If we do manage to restore the mirror, then there's also the little problem of it being cursed by design. We're gonna need to locate some Death Lotus powder, but the curator simply can't remember in which crypt she stored it all. A bit of brute force is gonna fix that problem. Stonebreaker mallet in hand, we start knocking down doors until we find what we're looking for. As we go around breaking all their stuff, 
we might as well eliminate the Nefrius' lackeys, as they've resorted to tearing Archivon down to the core for any evidence of the curator's medallion. You find any other nicks? Let me get that door open for you real quick. Good luck in there. And the new boss is a bit temperamental. The power of the harvesters will be mine. Come, sinners. Serve your master! No! The curator's power was nearly mine! Now, which order did I set those two? Now that we have all of our components, we can proceed. Once the mirror is complete, remember to apply the Death Lotus Powder. If you do not, you... Well, it is definitely not good. My memory may be going, but yours seems to be going even faster. Use the powder to enter safely. The Accuser has helped the Curator with setting up some protections. A wall of sin, it stands between us and the medallion. The power of the Venfeir, it's allowed us to pass walls such as these before. Open your eyes and use the power, Maul Walker. It is the only way. Or a bubble does the trick as well. Either way, the medallion of Avarice is now in our possession. Somehow we forgot how to be Venfeir. We need to remember. Reven, my medallion. Quickly. Take it from here before Denathrius discovers what we have done. Castle Nafria has been available for a bit now, yet the curator still mentions that Denathrius is gonna bring destruction if we linger around. I guess that that means lore-wise, the entire castle hasn't been conquered quite yet. Either way, with all the work that we've been doing, she will now be able to resume her duties. While we take the medallion back to Renafal, we've been working pretty hard at gathering those medallions, handed out by the sire. But one Van Veer cannot wear seven medallions and command the power they bestow, nor command respect from anyone looking at them. What we're going to need is an infinity gauntlet, an artifact that can contain the power of the medallions. Now, the Nephrius' corruption, it taints the forges of Revendreth, so we're gonna have to look elsewhere, our best option being Bastion. They're not just gonna open up the gates for Denison's Revendreth, though. We're gonna need to activate a mirror that they've hidden there long ago for operations in the Master's name. Gliotar, join the Mawwalker and I. Your skills will prove most useful on this mission. <laughs> Venture to another realm where we may be killed on sight to ask for help? <laughs> oh, morbidly exciting. Theotar, this is an order from Prince Renethal. We will meet you realmside, Mawwalker. Bastion. Even I cannot ah! escape my oh. sins. How do the Kyrian endure this obtuse brightness? And we'll meet you at the Eternal Forge. Your presence should ease any tensions that arise upon our arrival. Tensions? Uh, what have you gotten me into this time, Draven? Draven? Hmm. Come at your sire's bidding, I see. And more, Walker. Why are you here? Denathrius betrayed us all. This Mawwalker is helping us redeem Revendreth from Denathrius' power. We have need of your skills, Forge-like Prime. Little reason to trust you, Stoneborn. But this mortal has served Bastion. A steward always helps friends. Legion of Forsworn infesting my forge. Clear space to work, and I will help. Even the Venfeir are aware of the magnificent works crafted by Mechanicos, the Forge Light Prime. But the workshop is gonna need some work. Long ago, General Kyle was sent here on a mission for Denephrius. The master, he was rather envious of the Forge, has sent out his Stoneborn agents to sabotage it by siphoning away its anima stores. Weakened the Forge's defenses, allowed the Forsworn to capture. You wonder why I am distrustful of Venthyr. We will make amends for this, Forge-like Prime. I swear it. Best to fix that damage done. 
Mechanicus, he can't work without his tools, so we also slay Famos, his former apprentice, and grab his tool chest, building something that's gonna help in our mission. It would require some metal, taken from the Forsworn constructs, refined in the flames of the Eternal Forge, to purge them of their corruption. The design that Mechanicus has in mind, it's gonna be a crown, capable of channeling the powers of the Harvesters. A perfect circular mold already exists in his old storage. All we need to do is go in, look for it, and bring it back. Then the Forsworn in the area, they are a bit of a problem. Those of you that have played as a Kyrian, you might find this questline a little bit familiar, as you've already cleared this place of their threats. Now I can understand that multiple Mawwalkers, they might show up here to clean up the forge area at the same time. But Phaestus is once again stolen by Overseer Atticus. I'm not exactly sure how that works, how Kyrian and Venfir can kill the same NPC at different times and use it for different things. Either way, it is what it is, and we grab Phaestus and bring it back. Time to forge the crown. I sent guards to establish a foothold at the forge. Hurry! We will not be able to hold it forever. Theotar, we need you too. Move, Moorwalker. The Forsworn have their colossi operational. We cannot hold this position for long. Everyone, eyes on me. I cannot craft alone. Lend me aid! Theota, channel your magic on the anvil. Disciples, give us your blessing. Just a few more? Elegant and powerful. A crown to defend a realm. I crown I focuses the raw power of the harvesters. Exercise caution, mortal. <laughs> Enjoy the chaos while it lasts. Yes. Empower the crown. That voice! Where? Good work, my loyal servant. I will rise again. I... Sir, oh, the Archon! It is coming from the Medallion and the Crown! Hurry, Walker! My influence is irrefutable. You will serve me! I think that all of this takes place after we conquered Castle Nefria and sealed Sire the Nefrius within Remornia. His echo, his influence though, is still considerable upon the Medallion. So much so that the crown started to feed on our soul. We'll need to break the loyalty to the medallion's former master at the Citadel of Loyalty, hotspots and base of operations for the Forsworn. Uh, apologies for the delay. Convincing our new ally of my flying ability proved difficult. I am fine. We need access to the temple to fix the crown. Protected by a barrier, must disable. With Draven helping us from the air, we're able to slay even the mightiest of the Forsworn. The anima, it's drained from their barrier's source of power, clearing the way to our destination. The barrier around the temple is no more. Then we must move now. The temple is the only way to break the crown from Denathrius' control. No time to spare. You must go and present the crown. Those loyal to Shadowlands recognized here. You dare to defy my reign? Enough of your insolence! This ends now! Your hubris knows no bounds, mortal! Denathrius! Mowalker, we have your back! Stay back. Their loyalty must stand alone. Some really sick flashbacks to taking on the Nefris in the castle, with his hands of destruction and the cleansing pain. Merely an echo, yet the might of the sire, it still puts up a good fight. All the same, we're able to claim victory and purify the crown. I am eternal! I was crown to is ready this for your leader. All who would do it hard. Denathrius's influence the is gone. We must express our thanks, Forge Light Prime. Without your aid and trust, we would not have succeeded. We are in this together. But remember that when Bastion needs help. At your service, Forge Light Prime. 
You and me against the end. Let this crown embody everything Sinfor stands for. Revendreth will unite and redeem itself from the sins of Danathrius. Last week, we forced a crown fit for the prince to wield those medallions of power that we've been gathering. But in the meantime, heroes of the world, they've gathered their numbers and conquered Castle Nafria, disposing of Sire Danathrius, now trapped in his blade Remornia, but also running into an old familiar spirit. Kael'thas Sunstrider, you are free from the Sire's tyranny. But you cannot escape your own deeds. Come with me, and I will help you find atonement. In life, Keofas led his people through the most dire of times. They were still high elves back then, enjoying the good magics of the Sunwell. But all of that changed when Arthas and the Skirt showed up. Arthas Menafil, now an agent of the Lich King, with Frostmourne in hand. Frostmourne connected to the Jailer. He was on a mission of bringing back Kel'Fuzad as a Lich, and to do that, they were gonna need the powers of the Sunwell. Despite the best efforts, and many brave heroes giving up their lives, heroes like Sylvanas Windrunner, none of them were able to defend the high home of the elves. Kel'Fuzad, he was brought back, corrupting their ancient fount of power. Keofas had no choice but to destroy it, revealing the addiction of the elves that had formed itself over generations. Not only that, there was also still the undead scourge left behind in their lands. While the prince, he tried to work together with the alliance at first, Grand Marshal Gedefos, he made it quite hard by giving him near impossible tasks. He even pushed it so far to place Keofas in the Dalaran prisons to await their execution, with promises of salvation for his people, not to mention avoiding the executioner. The prince eventually teamed up with Lady Vush and Illidan Stormrage, but that salvation never came. Illidan kept his secrets close, and Kilfus was lured to the dark side, to the demonic side. Now allied to kill Jane the Deceiver and quite addicted to fell magic, he turned against his own people, tried to summon Kill Jaden into the world, until we put a stop to him, send him off into the Shadowlands where he was deemed worthy for Revendreth. Normally, Revendreth would actually help him try to atone for his sins in life, but not anymore, not under the rule of Sire Danephrius. Instead, they amplified those sins, adding anima and the sins of others to the prideful prince's soul, while his pain and hatred were channeled to make him a powerful weapon. Kael'thas was on the verge of destruction when we rescued him from Nafria. Unstable, confused, and pushed to the edge of its own existence. The accuser, she's taken it upon herself to try and redeem him, a task which is going to need all the help it can get. Out of my way! I shall avenge my people! Impudent child! You do not give orders here! The very arrogance that doomed you in life. Every choice. Help me identify the true sins of Kael'thas Sunstrider. What character flaw most hindered Kael'thas? Jealousy? Arrogance? Or greed? I never had need for gold. I had riches and power to spare. Jealousy? Please. I was superior to him in every way. Your arrogance swells within you, like so many other tyrants. When the Sunwell was destroyed, and Kael'thas was desperate to regain a magical connection for his people, who did he surrender his will to? The Lich King? The Old Gods? Or the Burning Legion? Never! That monster took everything from me! The Old Gods held no sway over me. Kil'jaeden exploited your arrogance, paranoia, and obsession to bend you to his will. I have found the heaviest burden on Kael'thas Sunstrider's soul. How did Kael'thas fail his people? Did he abandon his people? Betray his people? Or corrupt his people? Kael'thas Sunstrider committed all 
all of these sins against his own people. You cannot judge me. I did what was needed to save my people. You did what you wanted, and everyone else bore the consequences. Kael'thor Sunstrider, you failed your people. You will continue to unravel if we do not extract the excess anima from your soul, Kael'thos. I will take you to a place where we may expunge that anima in a productive manner. This place is in shambles. So are you. That is why we are here. At Darkwall Tower, the place where Prince Renafal suffered a great defeat. We help Kael'thos humble himself while the curator prepares the next ritual. His current state and trauma, it requires nothing short of perfect intervention and instruction to correct. When Prince Renafal fled Darkwall Tower, he was forced to leave many people and belongings behind. The powerful relics and weapons, they were long ago carted off to the master's lair. But the prince's dredgers, they were forced to stay and serve the master's traitorous lackeys instead. We save them and send them off to Sinfall, while also forcing Kael'thas to give up some of that extra anima that's bursting out of him. True leaders, they sacrifice of themselves to empower those under their care. Many Stoneborn and Gargan, including the prince's own pets, they were left dormant in Darkwall by the master's forces. That anima that he carries, it will be of great use to reanimate them, while the prince thinks we're too focused on his negative traits. He also has incredible strength, and we might as well put it to good use while he has it. Let's find the usurper that took the tower from the prince and get some sweet vengeance. You call this a challenge? I shall burn your world to ashes! No, you will show her mercy. Your enemy will live. Mercy is a weakness. She will pay. You are weakness. Your obsessive arrogance blinds you. In time, I will free you of it. But first we free him of those extra sins bound to his soul by the master. Something that would be a crushing burden for even the most noble of souls, which Kilfus certainly is not. Let us hope that our time with him has prepared his soul for the ritual. This ritual will help you expel the excess anima trapped inside of you, Kael'thas. It will hurt, but no more than you deserve. Now, Kael'thas! Expel the anima! No! I want its power! Impotent fool! That anima binds your sin stone! Release it, or I will throw you into the maw myself! Stand down! I will deal with this manifestation. I am... Hardly. That sinstone still belongs to you, Kael'thas Sunstrider. Tend to it. The sinstone of Kael'thas Sunstrider, Lord of the Blood Elves. Deserter. Traitor. Tyrant. In the wake of his people's devastation, Kael'thas Sunstrider abandoned the survivors in pursuit of vengeance. Instead of seeking a cure for his people, Kael'fa Sunshiner led them into corruption for the sake of power. Rather than rebuild his kingdom's legacy, Kael'fa Sunshiner bartered it to the Legion as a conduit for darkness, pride, greed, wrath. To redeem this soul, all three must be expunged. He is now free of the corruption from the Master, but he is far from liberated of his own sins. Onward to the Chalice District for the next lesson. When Prince Renafal made his final stand at the Dark Wall Tower, he called for aid from many of the noble houses here, but none of them came. Most simply avoided the conflict out of self-preservation. Shameful, but understandable choice. However, one house they took action. Lord Blackbill replied with cruel mockery and sent his Stoneborn to aid the Master's armies instead. Renafal has not forgotten that betrayal. And since Kilfus is so fond of vengeance, let's give him some by taking out the Stoneborn. As we do, we also come across a suspicious weapon, unlike those wielded by most of the Venfeer. Yet the marks it bears are unmistakably familiar. The essence of the power, it also feels familiar to Kilfus. So we have to discover where these weapons came from and who imbued them with such power. An opportunity to test out my new weapon! 
The Tithe Lord will have your head. Our old friend the Tithe Lords, Harvester of Envy. They're the ones controlling this operation. Working together with a lich from Eldraxis. And we're getting closer and closer to revealing the identity of the one who's been causing so much trouble behind the scenes. I must inform Prince Renathal of the Maldraxxus threat immediately. I am placing Kael'thas under your care, Marwalker. Humble him. We are the only thing standing between you and Oblivion, Kael'thas. The note we picked up. It mentioned a meeting in Darkhaven. Now, Kael'thas, he wouldn't want to tell us the best way to absolve his sins, as the accuser insists that we do. However, what if we would investigate, gather some information, present it to the accuser and Renaval? It could be quite useful to them, and a very selfless act of assistance on his part. The death of the Master surely means... The Master's removal changes nothing. Tell Lady Wixera that I am still in charge, and... My carriage is upstairs. We will finish this discussion on the way. Now that we are away from itching ears, you can reassure Lady Wixera that our plan remains intact. We may even be able to increase the rate that we are supplying her with anima. That would please the Archlich greatly. Of course it would. Inform your lady, I am still in charge. Everything will proceed unless she fails to uphold her side. The Archlich will not allow her failure. I am pleased that we see eye to eye. If you're part of the Necrolords, then the next bit is gonna look familiar, as the two Covenants, they now pretty much do the same thing. Disrupt the Meldraxian camp and put a stop to their operations. But it is a bit disappointing that it doesn't really line up with each other. You could imagine that Draka now shows up and joins this bit of the campaign. But the way that we get here, the dialogue in between, the conversation at the end, it's not really compatible. You've got the Venfir going in here and taking care of business, and then the Necrolords, they're doing it again. It's a bit of a shame, it could have been cleaned up and just made it flow much more easy. But what can you do? With the camp and the operations put to a stop, it is time to confront Lady Quixara, the one sent over by Margrave Sindane to oversee the encampment. Let's have a little chat, kill for the style, maybe even find out who this Archlich is that they all keep yelling about. Unbind me! What magic is this? Why are you sending Anima to Mount Draxus? Who do you serve? Answer me! You cannot stop my master. He is allied with the Banished One himself. Who? Who is your master? I serve the mighty Kel Fazad, and he will conquer all of. I will Fazad, return. The defiler of the Sunwell. At last, I will claim justice for Silvermoon! Finally, the new Baron for the House of Rituals has been revealed. It is none other than Kel Fuzad, allied to the Jailer. He is the one that's been pulling the strings behind the scenes. This former human found himself allied to the Lich King and used his call to the dam to spread the plague across the lands of Lordaeron. A plague that was not only designed to kill its victims, it also brought them back as the mindless undead bound to the will of the Lich King. We took him on during Classic, but his phylactery, the thing binding him to the mortal world, it was never destroyed. This allowed him to make a return in Wrath the Lich King, yet once more, that phylactery evaded us. As a Lich, he's probably more at home in the Shadowlands than will ever be. At the same time, it seems like our time with Kilfus, it has not been a complete waste. He might boast and come across as arrogant, but he's also reflecting on his past life. After the Sunwell's destruction and the near extermination of my people, I vowed to claim vengeance upon Arthas and Kelfuzad. But I needed power to see that happen. And to seize that power, I... Kelfus grows quiet. I am ready to return to Sinfall. 
I must recover my strength for what lies ahead, as the accuser is so fond of reminding me I have much to ponder. Make no mistake, I will have my vengeance. But I suppose I can afford a measure of patience. Be sure to inform the accuser of my selflessness. I look upon you and dare. So it is true. The Tithe Lord is working with Maldraxxus. We must plan our next move carefully. No more surprises. I shall extract more information from the souls we recovered from the Master's Lair. And I shall reach out to my most trusted contacts in Maldraxxus. Come, Kael'thas. You served well today. But nothing has been atoned for. You speak of atonement. It is the Lich Kelfazard who will atone for his crimes. I will burn his icy bones to ash. Focus on yourself. Your hatred will only hinder you. The Tithe Lord is no ordinary enemy. We will need a great deal of strength to topple him. Strength is not my concern. I require your understanding of... Strategy. First step in toppling the Tithe Lord is to put an end to his oppression of Stone Vigil Overlook. That way, we can win over the hearts and minds of his subjects. They've been wrung dry by the Tithe Lord's greed. The prince, dressed for the occasion, can offer them sanctuary and a chance to fight against their oppressors. Meanwhile, Draka thinks that this winning the spirit of the people operation is noble and good. However, a display of might is also in order. The Tithe Lord has sent his Stoneborn to further reap the anima from the citizens. To send the right message, we crush the oppressors and return the anima to the Stone Vigil's well. Then it's onward to the leader of this incursion, Fur Talon Vartox. If we strike her down, the Tithe Lord will be left exposed for our attack. Interlopers, die by my fist! Time to pay the ultimate price! Defeated by... A mortal! Oh. Pathetic. She would barely pass muster as a Maldraxxi foot soldier. I will meet you back at Renathal's location. Now is the time to rise up, Fenthir. We will reclaim the anima from your oppressor. What? That carriage is running off with the last of the anima! After them! There it is! We're right on their tail! This anima belongs to the Tithe Lord. Stay back or die. He is cornered. Let's show this underling the error of How dare you delay the ways. Tithe Lord's shipment! No! I have Look upon the strength of our mighty champion. Well done, Moor Walker. There is a simplicity. Oh, my dear subjects, we have achieved a small victory. Reclaim your anima from the spoils. We must move now and take the fight to your oppressor. The Venfir have the best kind of run, charging towards their destiny, towards the Tithe Lord. His base of operations is at Caretaker's Manor, named for the harvester whom he replaced. Don't forget, this is like the 275th Caretaker. Something about being the harvester of envy, it brings out ruthless ambition. Let us strike him down decisively. Now he draws power from these anima wells and keeping it all for himself. If we're able to hold his attention, then Renafal can not only empower us to defeat him, but also disable the wells. Connected. We must strip these wells of their anima, so the Tithe Lord and his allies can use it. Run! Renathal, you overstep your bounds. Here I have all of the power. Gods! Slay the bandits! Vampir! Now is the time to tear these oppressors down! Quickly, Moorwalker. Slay any in your path to the next well. I sense the power of my own medallion You are here. no longer the harvester of dominion, Renathal. That power belongs to the Archlich. You gave my medallion to a lich! Great work! Press the assault! What? <sighs> Never mind! 
I will cut you down where you stand, Moorwalker. Maldraxxus, honor our deal. Slay this would-be Usa. Where is he running to? Who is he running to? Archlich, join me. Use the medallion you were given, and together we can crush this Moorwalker. No, I think not. You have served your purpose. Now I must serve mine. Where are you going? To the next part of the plan, of course. Do try to slay some of these obstacles before they destroy you. I was promised power. No! Oh, it will take time to repair this mirror. We need to get the Medallion of Dominion back from that lich. Kel'Thuzad's manipulations have plunged Maldraxxus into chaos. What will your Covenant's medallion allow him to do? He could levy an army of unwilling denizens of Revendreth. With enough anima, he might even be able to manipulate the very fabric of the Shadowlands. With the Tithe Lord's defeats, we got our hands on another medallion. This time, the Medallion of Envy. Greed. The festering need for what others possess. Such souls burdened with this must be forced to confront their needs and overcome it. May they exist in squalor and desperation until their need is shattered. So shall there be the village wards. May the Medallion of Envy grant its harvester authority over this dark wards forever in the shadow of Castle Nafria. Forever within view of something greater that can never be achieved. And as it turns out, the Nefrius, former ruler of the castle, he's bestowed Renefal's medallion upon Archlich Kalfuzad. As long as the medallion is in the hands of that lich, he'll be able to hold sway over countless Venfir if he ever learns its secrets. Last week, we confronted the Tithe Lord and took away their medallion. The Archlich Kalfuzad used the Mirror to travel back to Meldrexus, leaving their former ally to their fate. The mirror has been shattered and is going to need to be repaired. There's only one person fit for the job. Master Mirror Maker Lorenz, who's been stuck in the Ember Wards. You might have saved him already by finishing up all the quests in Revendreth, or when you needed to set up your teleportation network. I didn't either, so to continue my quest, I quickly pop into the Ember Wards. I save Lorenz and her friend Simone. Just like that, the mirror is repaired. A direct link into the necropolis that floats above the bone fields of Meldraxxus. Our way in on the hunt for Kalfuzad. And of course, Prince Kilfus. He's not gonna miss this opportunity to claim his vengeance. Do you think yourselves clever? Building a mirror to breach my domain. No one enters these walls without my knowledge. You will not leave here. Kel'Thuzad taunts us from afar. But not for long. His necromancers will divulge where he hides. Eventually. I will take to the skies and scout the land below. Where can I find Kel'Thuzad? Kel'the who? Never heard of him. I have no time for this. I grow tired of these lies. Tell me where Kel'Thuzad will find you! Kel'thas Sunstrider! Good! Let him come! Be smarter than the others. Tell me where Kel'Thuzad is. is. underground. Far below this necropolis. Please. Have mercy. For traitors, death is a mercy. General Draven approaches. Mawalker, report! Have you discovered Kel'Thuzad's he location? He hides underground, like the coward he is. Then we shall draw him out. But first we must clear the skies of enemies. You should be sufficient for that task, General. I'll scout below. 
Draven's might is unleashed upon our foes in disguise, while Kilfus checks out the ground below. Soon enough, he sends out a signal. Kelfus adds liches, they've turned our army back into stone. We simply can't proceed without the support of the Stoneborn, so we destroy the crystals that are draining them of their anima. That beast is incinerating our forces! We'll be overrun! Necrolords, hold your ground! We will not fail, Maldraxxus! Hail, Perinus! Revendreth stands with you! This is where the Revendreth and Necrolord campaign comes together, uniting their forces to take on Kelfuzad. The mad lad, he actually did it. He has managed to summon a creature out of the Maw right here into Maldraxxus. And if he's able to summon this Maw in Furnace, who knows what else he might be able to set free. Enough with these distractions! We will not be deterred! Now is the time to strike! We must take the fight to Kelfuzad! What an impressive gathering. So many courageous champions. I am truly honored. Why, Prince Kael'thas, is that you? I never did properly thank you for the use of your sun well. Enough! Kael'thuzad, you have defied the laws of the Primus and conspired to bring ruin upon Maldraxxus. Surrender or be destroyed. Fools! It was all too easy to sow chaos and discord within your squabbling houses. The Jailer's plan unfolds exactly as intended. A pity you will not see it come to fruition. Kel'Thuzad is siphoning power from Margrave Sindane. Weaken him so I might use the staff to release her. Our allies hold off most of his reinforcements. Kel'Fuzad displays some powerful new spells, while also making sure to keep it old school, some cool new tricks. But still, he is unable to prevent the third fall of Kel'Fuzad. Interlopers, you will not escape your fate! We are not the ones you need to fear, Kel'Fuzad. Your cause is lost, you serper. Now you answer for your crimes against Maldraxxus. And against me. Foolish Margrave. Your victory is a hollow one. The medallion is ours. Let us return to Revendreth. What? We cannot simply leave. Not while Kel'Thuzad yet lives. I will have vengeance for Silvermoon. His fate is not yours to decide. Come, Lich. The Banished One called you to his side. The Arch Lich didn't seem overly happy with being dragged back into the Maw towards his master. I guess the deep love that he had for the Lich King, it does not extend towards the Jailer. We did manage to banish his evil from Maldraxxus and reclaim Renafal's Medallion of Dominion. It is a truth that for every one of those raised to Venfir, every soul that has expunged their past deeds and faced their burdens, there is a chance of remission to watch the Watchers, to grant dominion over the dominating. There is the Medallion of Dominion. May this medallion grant authority over Venfir, who have succumbed to the very corruption they serve to accentuate. Will it be enough? We do not yet possess all of the medallions. Renfo. You know my power. Embrace it. Be one with me, 
again. Yes, Prince Renathal. You do know him. And what his lust for power made him become. Yes. You are right. I cannot wield such power. But we can! The time of sires is over. Revendreth no longer serves a master, but a court! Renefal, like the Curator and the Stone Raids, they are not souls that were turned into Van Veer. They were willed into being by the Nephrius himself. Despite that, he's still able to ignore the temptation of power and push forward towards a new future for all of Revendrev. Speaking of the Stone Raids, her medallion of Roth is the last one that we need to claim to complete our collection. Something for the future, I suppose. Right now, we finally get the soul bind with General Draven and receive Vretnik, Renefal's loyal gargan, as our new mounts. Kilfus is pretty pissed that we were unable to claim vengeance upon Kelfuzad, but also opens his eyes to the mistakes that he had made in life. Perhaps, in time, he can atone for them. Yet he would gladly trade his own redemption to claim vengeance for his people. For those who died because Kelfuzad. Kilfus sighs, because I fail to protect them. Don't worry, Kilfus. I'm sure the Kelfuzad will make a return soon enough, and that our forces are going to march against him. Him, the Jailer, the Force of the Maw, and whatever else they might throw at us. Then for ranking, as a lot of you ask me how I would rank the different Covenant campaigns. The Vent for one, I'm gonna place at my number one spot, my favorite campaign out of all of them. Which might not be entirely fair to the others, as this Covenant campaign is tightly connected to the first raid. But all in all, it just felt to me like a thought out, interesting storyline that starts back while questing Revendreth, and right away it has a clear vision as to where it wants to go. The new characters that we meet, like Teotar, the Accuser, or the Countess, they're interesting, fun, and memorable. About halfway through the campaign, we have that raid, Castle Nafria, with the Nefrius imprisoned. But even beyond that, what could have easily been the conclusion of this campaign, it kept on going, with a very well-known character from Azeroth. The continuation of Kilfus' story with the Accuser, the bond and the dynamic between them I thought was fantastic. To see the Prince of the Blood Elves open his eyes to some of the mistakes that he made in life. And then of course, that history between him and Kelfuzad, not even touching upon Arthas, the Lich King, Sylvanas, all of that which is still to come. Then the whole aesthetic of the Venfeir is just great, which is why I chose it for my main character. Yeah, all in all, that is why for me the Venfeir are on number one. But all of this is just my opinion, of course. By all means, share what you think in the comments down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time, see ya!